think of home, I think of a place where there's love overflowing. I wish I was home, I wish I was back there with the things I've been knowing. Suddenly my world's gone and changed its face, but I still know where I'm going. Is there an addict in your family, an alcoholic, a drug addict, or do you know someone who is afflicted with drug addiction, or could it be you? Do you want to understand them? Do you want to know how to handle these situations? And do you need professional help? And if you do, when can you get this professional help? Tonight, we're going to try to answer all these questions with the help of our guests. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Welcome to Closer to Home. This is your, set, your, your host, Atises Apostol. Atises. This is, our, this is our second episode, but this will be the first time that I will re really be hosting this show because if you remember the last time, we have three excellent ghost, uh, hosts who walk me through the rudiments of hosting. And so I'd like to thank those three hosts. My friend, Mr. Rob Ocampo, is the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Colors Network, and also a good friend of mine, Ms. Grace Carion, who is the host of Entropview, and Ms. Belle Watson of Mabuhay Baguio. I may, I may not be able to measure with the skills and talents of this host but ladies and gentlemen tonight I'll try to do my best but of course I cannot do that without your help so please if you have any questions or suggestions uh, below your TV screen you'll see our numbers and please feel free to text your questions and suggestions and our guests will try to answer all these questions okay. so tonight we're going to, we'll, we have several guests tonight who will try to shed light on the issues, on the very serious issues of addiction and, um, addiction and alcoholism. Mm. So I'd like to introduce them one by one. I would like to start with Mr. Junjun Abelia, a counseling psychologist and a certified addiction Counselor. Good evening, Jimmy. Good evening, sir, and congratulations on having the show. Uh, this is malaking tulong to para sa mga taong nalunok, no? At saka siguro, especially for sa mga pamilya na, 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 na that are having this problem right now, you know? So I hope uh, with this show tonight, we can be able to help a little bit, you know, kahit konti, kung paano nila magkaroon ng relief. You know? I'm you know? sure maraming matutuwa ngayon sa uh, issue natin na to, no? And then, here on my right, I have the uh, very good friend, Mr. Renato Fider, also a counselor. Thank you, Cecil, and thank you for having us. Um, congratulations also in your show. Thank you. And uh, hearing that this is the second episode, you're starting strong with us as your guests. <laughs> so we pray we, uh, we make a dent in the community, the targeted audience. Thank mm -hmm. you. I hope we're wholesome okay. enough. <laughs> and of course, we have also the debonair man in pink <laughs> thank you Mr. Robert Labos thank you Cecil thank you for inviting us here tonight you know uh, I really like how you started the show you know thank where you. that those questions that if you have an addict or if you have uh, somebody or family having these problems you know and time that you you, know, you gave for the show inviting us you know I really appreciate it thank you Okay, you're welcome. And of course, the last but not the least, <coughs> the one I'm supporting yung advocacy niya dito, no? Uh, it's my husband, Larry Apostol. Thank you, Cecil. Uh, thanks for inviting us here. And uh, I hope uh, you can get something from us. And uh, we'd, like, we'd like to share our life stories. Thank you. Okay, so... Cecil, honey. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start our ball rolling. No? So, 
I'd like to ask each one of you, no? so you'll have a chance to answer these questions individually. Uh, would you like to share to our televiewers your personal accounts or experiences? Why you are in this advocacy? What you've been through and what happened in your life? Why are you here in this advocacy okay. right now? So, who would like to answer first? Uh, so yeah, so uh, I thought the, the, the oldest. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> oldest, in, in, in the oldest, in recovery. Maybe like to say also how how long uh, okay. have you been sober? So uh, so usually pag ganito, in a meeting we start. You know, I say I introduce myself. I'm Junjun. I'm an addict, you know, and uh, my drug career lasted for 22 years. Uh, yesterday I turned 19 years clean and sober. So not a drop of alcohol for 19 years. Yeah. Uh, and I didn't think that was possible, you know. But it, but I was able to do it one day at a time, you know. But in the beginning, no pisa hindi ko alam yan, you know. And I think what helped me recover was uh, why I'm doing this, because I was, you know, siguro I remember a long time ago that was in 1993. No, 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 ako bangag na bangag ako nun, and I was just watching this uh, over and over, not really watching TV, but tumitira ako nang tumitira sa kwarto na isolate ako. And uh, I saw this show on TV. It was a bunch of people na nasa rehab, and they were starting to recover. Tapos, na 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 dili ko 65,000 yung cost ng treatment. Mas dili na ako, meron pa ako mga 300,000 sa bangko, pwede pa. So, mag-reserve ako pang pa-rehab ko. But the point was, nakita ko sa TV, pwede pa lang gumaling. You know? So, nabigyan ako ng pag-asa. And of course, hindi ko na, hindi ko naman, na, hindi rin ako nakapasa doon, dahil naubos ko din yung pera ko. But uh <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, eventually nagtayo kami ng sarili naming rehab and I think that was what helped me recover you know uh, nung tumulong ko yung ibang tao nakalabas ako sa aking self absorption and I learned by watching others recover and that helped me stay clean so nakita ko yung unmanageability nila na ipamudmud sa akin yung unmanageability ko and that helped me learn you know and gave me a purpose and siguro kaya ko pa rin pinagpapatuloy to as the years go by in the beginning, it's just to show hope. But you now, as a counseling, ako, I can also see that there's a lot of areas that we can improve on para makatulong sa mga kapo ko adit, you know. Uh, so, you know, advocacy ko. And really, it's for me, you know. If pag ginagawa ko to para sa sarili ko, hindi ako umiinom, hindi ako nag-iisip tumira, hindi ako nag-iisip ng babae, you know. So, ito yung mga addiction. So, yun ang, ano, may four minutes na ba ako? Okay, thank okay. you very much for uh, sharing that. Ano, okay. Masyado akong mabilis, ha? Dahil okay. maya-maya pa. <laughs> anyway, okay, so, how about, uh, Renato, say something about yourself. Why, why this advocacy? You introduce yourself first. My name's Renato. I'm a grateful addict. Hi, Renato. <laughs> Ayaw pang mag-accept ng kanilang affliction, okay lang yan. Hindi <laughs> nakakahiya yung maging addict, no? Mm -hmm. But why this advocacy? First of all, this is a, it's a personal affair. Mm -hmm. you know? um, it, it, this, is, this is what in a way defines me. Um, I did not know it before. I was the last to know I was an addict. Mm -hmm. And um, I hated, I hated the, the, the word addict, no? Because of that stereotype image na gusgusin, un, you know, un, unmanaged and all. But uh, you know, in this day and age, you'll see you'll see addicts in different forms. You know? mm -hmm. They're they're in high places. They they're in all sectors of society. And and I know for myself that doesn't make me a bad person. Mm -hmm. So until I learned about my affliction to be a disease, dun ako na pa. Ah, okay. Kaya pala hindi ko matigil. Mm -hmm. Sakit pala to. And um, instinctively, out of self-preservation, I learned I can only abstain. And that's the only way to manage it. Mm -hmm. And again, itong addiction, uh, I learned later on, it's it's chronic, it's relapsing, it's not curable, pero manageable. No? So, why advocate for this cause? First of all, again, on a personal level, this is one way I know I could sustain my recovery. This is another way I can uh, help others uh, in need, just like me. Marami dyan in the closet because of the stigma. No? And nakaawa naman yung mga yon. They're, they're not, <clears throat> yung, yung stigma keeps them from going, coming out in the open for treatment, for help. 
and uh, worse than that, the people around them uh, mistreat the addict. So you don't treat a sick person in, in this way or that way. No? Uh, mga may sakit yan. And I feel, I feel nung nakita ko, in effect, the harvest is plenty. Yeah, ang dami dyan. Pero, no, how many of us are willing to go out in the open and talk about this? Hmm. And, uh, primarily also to to break the stigma associated with addiction. Thank you very much for sharing that, Ronato. I, I'll, I'll get back to you in a while. What, let's may, give may I add something lang pala, just short lang. Mm -hmm. You know, as I went further into this, you know, lalo lumakas yung commitment ko mm -hmm. to uh, for advocacy nung nalaman ko na, you know, sa buong mundo pala, about 12 to 30 percent of people who are sick with addiction get treatment. Sa ating bansa, in the past uh, eight years, we have almost two million people with addiction and less than 1% or less than 35,000 were treated for the past eight years. Mm -hmm. You know, hindi naman tayo pobre bansa, you know. Uh, yung ibang bansa like Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, they, they get a 12 to 30%, mm -hmm. you know, people treated. Sa atin, bakit hindi, ano nangyayari? You know? mm -hmm. So, dun lalo akong nagalit ako, and lalo akong naging committed to this advocacy, you know, na siguro, uh, hindi naman, mga Pilipino naman, maawain, you know? Mahal naman natin ang mga pamilya natin. Bakit ganun? Ano nangyayari sa mga kapatid ko ng mga nalululon, you know? Ayan. Okay. So, thank you for that share, no. Junjun. Now, I would like to hear from Robert, no? So, would you like to what? share yung mga experiences mo noon? Yes. Paano mo nalaman na... Well, I start... Adika, yeah, well, I first... I think the first drug I took was probably I was around 8 years old. I remember it was a really... Wow. It was a really plastic good balloon. punch. <laughs> yeah, no, it was a punch. 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 I didn't know that yung plastic balloon, I can get high on plastic balloon pala, but I and didn't know why I like it so that, much. I uh, <laughs> I remember na really the first, I think that I really enjoyed this punch. We were in a, I think it was the 25th mm -hmm. anniversary of my uncle, and I remember, you know, going back to this uh, punch bowl, mm -hmm. and you know, I went to my dad, he probably saw that I was kind of flush, namumula ko. Tapos sabi ko, what, what have I been drinking? Yung sabi ng dad ko, yun na yung said na, yun na itong, itong, itong punch. And he told me, you know, may alcohol yan. Mm -hmm. You know, to stay away from that. And I couldn't understand it why he told me to stay away from it when I was enjoying it, you know. Mm -hmm. It made me play with my cousins more. You know, I was, you know, I wasn't that, I was kind of, you know, really very shy eh, mm -hmm. growing up. So, you were more but social. Yeah, more, I became really more social. More affable. <laughs> affable, I, mean, I could talk. And then at 12, I took my mar I took marijuana. And that's about 30 years ago. Okay. You know, so that's how it probably okay. started. What was the sure. best drug for you? Okay. I think the best was, it's still that punch, you know. The that's punch like, you know, <laughs> it's <laughs> like the first kiss, eh. Okay. Oh, yeah. You can never <laughs> forget <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, La I'm Larry. I'm a grateful recovering alcoholic. Hi, Larry. Larry. Yes, uh, I had a career of drinking for 40 years. And uh, in that time, I was really unmanageable until I hit rock bottom and... Uh, uh, all I do is drink every day. I grant work and I make trouble in the family. Although I'm not gone to prison or not, uh, but uh, the trouble I've been to is really worse and it has affected everybody. Okay. And uh, why uh, why I'm addicted to alcohol? Uh, let me tell you that alcohol is addictive. It, it is a drug, uh, and that's my drug of choice. I. I don't like marijuana, I don't like shabu, <coughs> but uh, I like alcohol very much. Any kind of alcohol. Mm, yummy. Okay, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Kasama ba <ang> <laughs> We'll also talk more about it. No? But uh, uh, after, we're going to have a short break. After the break, we're going to discuss how they're coping with their recovery and also how their family is coping with their recovery. We'll be right back. We're back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, during our first uh, segment, we discussed about the, our guests shared their experiences and why they're in this advocacy. Now, I'd like to ask them another 
question and that's how do you, you guys cope up with your addiction how did you recover and how did your family cope up also with this no medyo nagkagulo ba or or whatever no so i think we'll start with larry this time okay kasi siya yung nahuli ka nila how did you cope with Cecil? yeah yeah thanks really uh when I hit rock bottom, I was really unmanageable, and uh, uh, I was always in a run riot situation. And uh, ko lahat ng gusto ko. And then I come home drunk. Uh, when I honk on the gate, everybody runs. They're afraid of me. The trauma is there. Uh, the fear is there. Parang palagi ako magawala, and uh, I, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. Really, and uh, I'm always angry. They say I'm always angry. I'm always harsh. It's like that. But I finally realized that, that oh, talagang ano yung di ko na ano di ko na kaya. Uh, my family, they're not talking, but uh, in their hearts, in their feelings, talaga they're already God, galit na galit na sila sa akin. So. There were times na gusto ko nang ihinto, I want to stop, but I could not. I could not really. It's I tried it many times and uh, I could not do it. Why? Because alcohol is readily available. Nandiyan lang sa tabi-tabi. Makakita lang ako ng signboard. Uy, yun na. Yun, yun. Bili na kaagad. So, really, and then, this uh, stroke of luck, uh, parang there was an awakening and I said, ayoko na. Total surrender. I don't know if I was forced to surrender or total surrender or submitted myself. Hindi mo matandaan. Then really, forced. When I when I came to the program, treatment, talagang there were sort of reflections and tiling nang o ano ba nang yari sa akin. Really, everyday reflections for six months. It was hard, but it, it was worth it. Okay. And I listened to these uh, old timers, and really, I uh, got a lot of lessons. And every time I put it in my heart, I say, these people, they're hel helping me a lot. And uh, imagine these people, they were 40 years sober, they were 30 years sober. And they were, they were such inspiring people, you know. And talagang na-inspire ako sa kanya. Although, hindi naman akong mayabang, nagagayahin ko yan. No, no, no. We only live one day at a time. So, I, it's, a, it's a miracle, really. Uh, Nag-recover ako. Uh, I'm uh, 31, 31 months na akong sober and uh, I really thank my family for accepting me again. And then I thank the fellowship that we are always together. Na great bonding. Every time we share our experiences. Ganon. And really, gusto ko na mong yari ngayon is nakikita ko na yung maganda ang result. Ano yung parang nag-integrate ulis sa society nag-i-integrate ulit sa pamilya and they're welcome, welcoming me back with open arms and, and joining organizations with open arms. Uh, I speak the truth na uh, ano ako ah, uh, addict ako, alcoholic ako. And I tell them their, my story and uh, alam nila and they accepted me with open arms and they know when we have we have parties, hindi nila ako pinapainom. Yan. And uh, yes. so, it's really, ano, and uh, they come okay. to me and they seek uh, suggestions. Kasi meron silang mga ganito, ganito, ganito. May mga addict, okay. may mga alcoholic. So, okay, ganun. thank you very much for sharing that. Let, yeah. Let's hear from Robert naman. Well, how, do, how did you cope up with your addiction and, uh, and what's the reaction of the family? Well, Are they helpful or what? Yes, well, I remembered uh, three really big... My addiction has really been an ongoing, ongoing issue with myself and with my family. It's been an ongoing struggle really for the past, you know, past 30, 35 years. 
I remember wow. one event was, you know, when I was 25. This was when my eldest daughters right now, I'm glad that they're here in the, in the studio. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they were just, you know, they were about to, my, my wife was pregnant with them. And I remember going to my dad and telling my dad, you know, Pakin, my I just got my my girlfriend. She wasn't my wife at that time. My girlfriend pregnant. Can you just please take care of my my child? You know, I because uh, I cannot even take care of myself. You know, and he told me, okay, uh, I'll take care of your your children. And I told him besides and besides father's dirt wins. You know, I probably cannot take care of them. And he told me I'll. I'll take care of them, but probably I'll help you take care of yourself. And that was the first time that I met Junjun in treatment. That was my first uh, treatment. Uh, that was 17 years ago. And then the last was uh, last year, you know. Uh, I. So you had relapses? I've experienced relapses, and this has really been very painful to my family, to myself. You know, I... If I'm sick right now, I, I probably, or traumatized, I probably can say that my own family has been really also very traumatized, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we've, we've developed some ways of coping. Some of them are healthy ways of coping. Uh, some are really very, like, my wife would just probably sometimes kick me out of the house, <laughs> you know, just to, you know, or probably buy some piece by piece, you know, mm -hmm. probably lock me up somewhere. Mm -hmm. Or or what you know, but those were their ways. It was just all probably coping. Now I'm just really very glad that uh, I'm here in in Baguio. You know, I was I've been following Junjun eh, from Makati from the first treatment <laughs> in Makati all the way here to Baguio. Fan ka ni Junjun eh? <laughs> Ako yung fan or siya yung fan eh? You know, <laughs> suke or oh, suke. But you know, I'm happy that uh, I'm happy that I'm here. So yeah, thank you, Cecil, for that. You know, I hope uh, that helped. Okay, thank you for sharing your story with us, Robert. Now, I'd like to hear from Renato. Interesting the question. Proud, the proud addict. <clears throat> thank you, Cecil. <laughs> how did I cope with my addiction? Or how did my addiction cope with me? No? Well, <laughs> you know, ultimately, na uwiyan sa andyanayin cheating, lying, stealing, mm -hmm. and of course, hurting the people around me, manipulating anything, anything to feed my addiction. Uh, I also, you know, in the process, I became resourceful and creative, <laughs> and I was able to, I thought I was able to tap into my, you know, creative juices, John, to, to be able to sustain my habit. But most of all, how I was able to cope was, you know, because of my mother, bless her soul, you know, ang maraming nanay dyan na hindi mahihindihan ng anak eh. Mm. When I would come home ranting and asking for something in the guise of covering up for something else except my addiction, bigay ka agad. No? And uh, eventually, siyempre, yung family uh, uh, suffered from it also because kung baga sa sampung dasal ng nanay ko sa aming magkakapatid, siguro yung dalawa napunta sa, sila, sa kanila, yung walo sa akin. No? Um, and how were they able to cope? And also, yun na nga, the, by the same measure, no, out of love. Except that, you know, it, it's sad that at their time, they did not know, well, they expressed love the best they knew how. Hindi pa nila alam yung mga, mga tinatawag natin na tough love, setting boundaries, mga ganyan. No? And it's not their fault. Pero, uh, buti na rin lang, Ganun ang nangyari, or, or I wouldn't be here no, with this advocacy. Okay, thank you, Renato, for that wonderful share. Mm -hmm. okay. And now, of course, yeah. last but not the least, okay. Junjun, so, maraming share. Coping with addiction, huh? so I guess I wasn't able to cope with it, kaya ako naging addict. <laughs> <laughs> so, I tried to control my drugs, but it didn't, you know, I, it controlled me. And I guess it, I was only able to get out of it, recover. Mm. You know, when I found this program, it took 12 steps now. And the first step was saying, hindi ko kaya. You know, yung nang inamin ko na hindi ko kaya. Tapos, uh, in second step, come to believe, naniniwala ko sa God. And then in third step, pabayaan ko siya. And that's the only time I felt relief. And parang naka-feeling ko, naka-alaw, naka-alis ako. 
this addiction. And uh, so that was my experience with it. And the, the, the simple lang eh. I just had to keep telling myself that every day for the past 19 years. Na hindi ko kaya. Hindi na ako yung nagmamanil obra ng buhay ko. Pinabayaan ko na kay God. And siya na nagdadala sa akin. You know? And it's been amazing. You know? okay. It's really been amazing. I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but I have no fear because God is in charge of my life. You know, I don't want to sound preachy, but that's how it's been. And uh, I don't know how my family cope with me. Naman. I don't, my sister, up to today, you know, hates me. My sisters, you know. I received a text from her. It's really stuck in my mind. Kuya, gago ka nun. Gago ka ngayon. Wala kang ginawa para magbago yung isip ko na gago ka, you know. That's my younger sister. Okay. And, um, you know, she, and she controls our money, you know. <laughs> you know? But wala, and I had, tapos, okay. and applying my print, the steps to her, I am powerless oh. over her perception of me. Okay. You know, step one. Eh? Uh-huh. And I, I come to believe that God can restore her to sanity. You know, and I turn over her will and her life to him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know? okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We have a text in question here. Mm. I don't know who would like to ano, answer this question. Sabi dito, question from family member of an addict. Dapat po ba naming patawarin ang uh, ang addict na kapamilya namin kung sobrang dami ng kasamaan ang ginawa niya? Kailan siya dapat patawarin? And how? So, siguro nga, you know, yung addiction nga sa, sa, sa sakit siya. Mm-hmm. Pag sinabi mong patawarin, ibig sabihin nagkasalanan siya. Mm-hmm. Wala naman siyang kasalanan kung may sakit ka. You know? So, siguro dapat mo munang pagalingin. Pag bumaling na siya, at saka mo na isipin kung kailangan yung patawarin o hindi. You know? Pero ang importante ngayon, pagalingin. Hindi siya masamang tao na kailangan bumait. Siya yung taong may sakit na kailangan pagalingin. I think, I think that one, one thing there is, I'm a, you know, I'm a sick person trying to get well. Mm-hmm. Hindi ako, hindi ako masamang tao na nagtatry na maging mabait. You know, I'm, I'm somebody, I have this disease of addiction that I'm just really trying my best to get well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, What's that? In Tagalog? Or it's saka, in, in, it's in Tagalog, the text? At saka, oh, ang oh, addict, oh, hindi niya nalalaman <laughs> nagkakasala na siya eh. Dahil wala sa sa isip eh. Basta, nung tumitira rin ako, ang ang inaatupag ko lang, makuha ko lang, makatira lang ako, oh. di ba? Nakakasakit na ako ng tao, hindi ko nalalaman. Maraming blind side mm-hmm. sa addict. As far as the codependent or yung nagtatanong sa okay. tama lang na magpatawad. Pero ultimately, tignan ano ba, yung tao ba, masamang tao or may sakit? Mm-hmm. Doon Kung may sakit, yun. hindi mo naman inaaway, di ba? Yeah. Exactly. Dinitreat mo nang maganda siya. So, Ikaw ba? Inaaway mo si Larry? Ha? Inaaway ka ba niya? Larry, you love me. Really, uh, there's no known cue for uh, drugs and alcohol. Ano? Uh, kasi yung mga yan, mga cunning, baffling, powerful. Talagang sasakupin ka ng mga yan. So, in the meantime, uh, let's be tolerant. Ang mga may sakit, let's help them, be, be, ano, yung, uh, be patient, uh, ano, if you, kung gusto nyo rin, uh, lead, lead us, uh, lead him to us, or lead her to us, and uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll do the counseling, or we can help, we're ready to help, talagang, ano, and uh, they can learn a lot from us, kasi wala tayong magagawa dyan, sakit yan, talagang, hmm. Be patient, uh, be understanding uh, sa, sa mga and afflicted, it's either drugs or alcohol. You know. yeah. I think we tough, have to say it's tough. hard living with an addict. Yeah. Mahirap yeah. talaga. Yeah. Talagang mo, a lot of love and compassion is required. No, but so. I, underst- I understand, Cecil, <laughs> yung question. No? Talagang, totoo yan, you know, I did a lot of things sa addiction ko that was really very painful sa loved ones. Kung nakasakit talaga ako sa sa magulang ko, sa mga anak ko, sa asawa ko. That's really very true, no? So, ano, Robert, yung pa, mga katulong sa pamilya? Para mga... Ano, ano yung nakatulong sa'yo na ginawa ng kapamilya? Na, na, yung na, nakita nila may problema at humingi sila ng tulong. Nakita nila na hindi nila kaya. They've tried everything and... So, asking thought, for help? Asking for help from a professional. professional. Parang, yes. yung may sakit ba? Uh, naganap ako ng tulong. Pero, I understand the question, na no? Totoong nakasakit yung addiction. Okay. It's really, uh, it's really okay. painful. So... Thank you very much. No? So we know we know na ngayon uh, from our guest, we're saying that addiction is not um, uh, parang a fault. No, mm. it's a disease. 
it's a disease that needs to be treated and, uh, and the managed. members of the family should so should show seek love and compassion to and the seek others help. and uh, a lot of it no para ma, ma pagaling sila okay so we're going to have another break and when we come back we're going to discuss ano ano ba yung mga klase ng mga addictions at para malalaman kung may ad addict nga ba yung sino suspecha niyo addict no okay so we'll be right back we're back, okay. ladies and gentlemen, at medyo nag-iinit na po yung topic oh. natin ngayon. And now, we're going to ask our guest, sino nga ba yung addict? Ano nga ba yung addiction? Okay. And <laughs> ang very wrong panchata dito sa Baguio is yung alcoholism. alcoholism. No? So, uh, tell me, Junjun. Yeah, so, madaming... When do you yeah. say na ang isang tao May problema na. Oh. Uh, so, madaming addiction, no? But uh, I guess yung question is, kailan ba kailangan humingi ng tulong. And uh, para simple, you can do this at home. You know, and there are six life areas. Yung, yung financial, you help me with this guys. Yeah, ito ang measure, measure of <laughs> so, ito yung measure, no? Ito yung life areas, may financial, uh, social, edu education, and work, legal, uh, health, and uh, the other one is family. No? Okay, kung merong problema dito, may ginagawa siyang behavior na paulit-ulit, despite the negative consequences, inuulit pa rin niya, that's a problem. In just one area, hindi kailangan yung anim. Uh, kung yung anim siguro, so most of us, so, eh, talaga ano na, siguro, kulong detox, inpatient, kulong one year, yung mga ganun. Pero baka kung isa lang, pwede pa madaan sa counseling. You know, so, so just yung mga, one. Yung know? mga sukat na yan, usually nauuwi sa parating walang pera. O kaya away ng away. So, nandyan yung financial, nandyan yung uh, relationships, di ba? or absent ang absent. Mga unmanageable na yan. Anong nangyayari dyan? Diba? Yan naman yung mga sukat na baka meron ng ad addiction or comp compulsive behavior baka sa on kesyo, eh, online gaming or drinking or Pero drugs. Pero siguro basta mayroong whatever. symptom na ganyan, ibig sabihin, addict. No, but then, yeah, mga sukat, mga sukat ng yun. But, oh. but you know, Renato, I remember, I remember na, like King Juni, you were talking about that, at saka Renato, natatandaan ko din na, Ah, uh, nawala na nung pera yung nanay ko, ninakaw ko na, nawala ay na transfer na ako ng transfer ng eskwelahan. You know, I couldn't take care of myself, mapet na ako pero still sinabi na hindi walang problema 'yan. You know that guy, uh, hindi siya addict. So, so ilang taon mong ginagawa 'yan paulit-ulit? Ako at saka yung pamilya ko for the longest time sinasabi nila na na hindi siya addict. So I think that's also the other side of the coin in denial. Question, na meron man tayo nito mga hallmarks na to or itong mga symptoms symptoms but the other side of the coin of this one is it's very hard for us to admit na mayroong addict sa sa also sa because of the shame and the guilt and, no? uh, what's what would be evident also sa behavior ng addict is as an addict give ang self esteem eh. so madalas maglul maghahanap yan ng uh, wellness or sense of well-being outside mm -hmm. him or herself mm -hmm. so may mapapansin mo hindi kung hindi palagay ang loob ng tao, parating irritable, or may inaaway, o namimintang, ano yun? Ano yung buhay? So parang ano, madaming drama. Oh. Madam, ma ang tanong oh. siguro, madaming bang drama sa pamilya mo ngayon? You know, madaming all these little dramatic events, and you keep saying, it will be okay, it will be okay, okay. you keep hoping it will be okay, and there will be a blockbuster event. You know? And that will be the time na matashak. And hopefully the blockbuster event will not be fatal. Or, like in Renato's case, uh, life imprisonment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the public of the Philippines. You know? So, you know, mga blockbuster yeah. event, di ba? Yeah. Or some major accident, you know? Yeah. Pero despite this blockbuster event, the addiction, because of the addiction, the re behavior will repeat itself. Uulitin yeah. pa rin, you know? Pero exactly. at least siguro yung pamilya naman niya, medyo magigising na na ko because of hopefully. the blockbuster yes, event na yun. Kung yung addict, hindi man siya magising. Yes, yeah. Diba? Yeah. Yeah. Diba? Oh. Ano yung blockbuster oh. event? Sa sana, nga hindi na umab <laughs> sana nga hindi na umabot sa ganun, no? Yung symptoms pa lang, ma-acknowledge na ng family na, oops, oh. may ko na dito. Pero, may ano ma ganun ang kutura ng Pilipino. Hindi tayo pupunta sa dentista kung maliit pa lang yung butas, eh. Yeah. Tayo, pag kailangan ibunot na or yeah. <laughs> hindi na masayang I remember sinabi ni Renato kanina na you're the last one to know eh correct diba? I was the so, last one so you're not you're not aware na everyone so else outside dapat talaga oh, oh. Ano everyone else outside is complaining and the, the problem is they don't confront me with it out of fear of how I would behave mm. 
dahil siyempre reactive, no? Nandiyan yung depensa. Pero they're all talking about it among themselves. You know, in, in my mind, iniisip ko, family dinner, and I'm not there. Ako na naman ang pinag-usapan. <laughs> so me, so, pero, usually ganyan. I know, I know it, and they know it. But, it's usually the fear of confrontation that they're afraid of. And they, for lack of knowing a better thing to do, where so, to start yung help. Yung din siguro. Yes. Parang sakit din naman kasi Correct. na yung anak mo, Adi. And I think ito, because, because this, this thing has caused so many things. Pati yung part na, parang feeling mo wala ka bang magawa. Uh, alam mo na it's there already, nahuli na, 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 nahuli na ng police, or talagang magulo na yung bahay, pero... Yung the feeling na helplessness, you know, sometimes... Analysis, paralysis. Oh, oh. kakaisip sometimes. Isip ng isip. I Kaya remember na uh, magkukomplain ng sakit ng siya yung ganun ko, uh, some of my, my kid or what, or my fever. Sabihin, uh, wag muna natin dalhin sa doktor. You know, it might just disappear or what. or mm -hmm. But really behind that is yung oh. takot na gumalaw or hindi alam kung ano gagawin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think if there's that So, comfortability or unmanageability na oh. sa, sa family system, I think uh, it's best to just maybe uh, go consult somebody. Mer meron akong client And, ng lahat ng pamilya, nakasabit na lahat yung wallet sa Levy. <laughs> wala pang problema. And to think of it, no, I think that fear comes from uh, them, yung perception nila that they might create more harm than good. On the contrary, ang paradox dyan mm -hmm. is Before anything gets better, it has to get worse. You know, pu push him to the limit. Harm kung harm, before it gets longer, before more harm is done, stop. Stop na siya agad. Oh. Okay. You'd like to say something? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, in my case, uh, I speak for myself. Huh? Um, I've experienced a lot. Number one is denial. Tapos, puro justification. Those are forms of insanity, you know. Uh, gana, sabi nila, ba't ka uminom? Nakainom ka ba? Sabi, hindi ah. Maski nangangamoy ka na, hindi ah. Uh, gana, uh, bakit ka na naman uminom? Sabi, eh, kasi malamig eh. Gusto ko magpainit eh. So, ne the next day, bakit ka uminom? Eh, kasi mainit. Gusto ko magpalamig eh. O kaya malamig. Gusto ko magpainit eh. So, it's always the justification. Laging eh, meron. Uh, laging merong reason. And then, palaging nawawala. Ganyan, and then, pag uuwi, gabing-gabi na, ganyan, palaging lasing, tapos, always denying, hindi nakainom, ganyan, pero, lasing na lasing, ganyan, and, uh, really, uh, everybody experiences yung mga ganitong situations, ano, na, ano, uuwi sa bahay, nakainom, and then, very rowdy, tapos, dinideny, tapos, nandyan lang, nag-shot lang kami. Thank you. Pero, okay. no, no, no. Thank you, Larry, for that no. illustration. No? Uh, given those kind of kinds of responses from the family, but kana naman uminom or oh. what? Mm -hmm. Especially pag ganyan, talagang yung adik matatakot to come mm -hmm. out in the open. Yeah. Uh, kung okay. confrontation na. Uh, Why kuna naman ako kinukulit? He's afraid of <laughs> being found out <laughs> yeah. or na pagbintangan na naman. No? Uh -huh. Pero anda tayong kung iyon nakainom kaya ata? You know, is something bothering you when you're able to come down and come down to that level and find out, be interested in what is happening to your suspected uh, addict. I think in, with something like this, with something as big as this, I think it's, it's ganun eh, it's hard not to see it eh. It's like, you know, before the break, we were talking about, ito nga yung, ano, how would you know, no? It's just like, how would you know kung buntis ka o hindi, you know? Uh, but there's, uh, there's, things, there's symptoms, you know? So, Uh, with something like, like this, like addiction, mahirap talaga na hindi mapansin eh. It's just, you know. Trust your feelings. Trust uh, the feelings, yeah. You know, uh, in, a, in a family where there's addiction, in a dysfunctional family, it, feel, it feels like it's frozen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't feel comfortable. Okay. There is but no you love. You, you, there is love, but there is distrust. Like a, We don't talk. But, but you need We to don't, face it talaga, yeah. no? We, We don't, don't talk. We don't trust. Around. Another don't illusion. Oh, another illustration I think is yung parang may invisible na elephant sa kwarto. Mm -mm. Parang people are stepping on on eggshells baka may baka may masabi na bigla na lang maraming secrets. Oh, maraming mm -hmm. sekreto, you know. Maraming bawal pag-usapan. So and this is just one particular type we were you were talking about just drug addiction, you know, but mm -mm. 
in general, really addiction can cause that. Okay. Um, I'd like to read this, ano, no? this text message. Sabi niya, we salute you people for your advocacy. Mabuhay po kayo, nawa Thank ay you. marami pa kayong matulungan sa ating society. Salamat kayo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hindi mabote, mabuhay. <laughs> <laughs> mabuhay. Hindi mabote. Okay, and uh, do we have time for one more question? No? Ito. We, we'd encourage the viewers to ask as yes. much as you can. No? Yes. Take advantage okay. of this. We don't know when we'll be back here again. Uh, if yeah. Cecil wants us back. <laughs> yeah, of course. Are we wholesome? Of course. I uh, do you think the this is another question? Do you think the sin tax bill played an important role in controlling people who are addicted to smoke and alcohol since its price wave high almost a double? It hasn't stopped me. <laughs> uh, I was praying for that one for that sin tax for that sin tax bill, and it's. I really have this New Year's resolution to stop smoking, and I feel guilty that I broke it just a while ago. But it's helping me. You know, it's helping me that 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 syntax. And I think you know, if you do if you do this, I think you should. Uh, there's a effect eh, sa society. You know, yung second hand smoke and things like that. Then you pay for it. You know. That's right. So uh, also, syntax, yung, siguro, I don't really I'm sorry, going to curb, no. Yeah. But uh, but I co I commend you know the the way the the kind of thinking that produce the syntax. Mm -hmm. That means that people are exploring ways to, uh, to curb the demand. No? Mm -hmm. But Sigura uh, also benefit from syntax. I hope they use the taxes and mm -hmm. channel the funds para sa pagpagagaling naman ng mga taong nalunok. Mm -hmm. no? okay. uh, para sa treatment ng cancer, para sa treatment ng mga may emphysema. Mm -hmm. Hindi lang, you know, doon nila gamitin. Yo. Kasi yung mga taong walang pera, hindi naman nila kayang pumunta doon ng paggamot mm -hmm. ng emphysema or you know, yung mga taong hindi makapasok sa rehab ngayon because wala sila pera, you know? Okay. Also, the syntax might only, you know, it it might be one factor, but you know, one among many, maybe a drop in the bucket, no, of the of what it takes for one to stop smoking. Uh, yung syntax na yan, kasi external factor yan, eh. So the smoker is subjected to something. But ultimately, recovery is, is an internal affair. It's a personal affair. Uh, it's the psyche of the addict. See, Larry. Uh, what I think of the syntax is, uh, I don't know, but uh, beware. Kasi, syempre, tumaas lahat. In relation with that, sigurado ko, yung budget sa pamilya, mababawasan, mapupunta sa bisyo. Yan, matatag. Kung, kung dati, 30 pesos yung red horse, naging 50 na, so marat, mababawasan ng 20 ng budget sa pamilya. So, hindi ba so, mababawasan yung red horse? No. Oh, red horse, oh, pagkain ng pamilya. Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. yun, ano? It Kaya only no? strengthens oh. yung, si yung nga, eh. capacity to drink ng mga tao. Eh. Bakit? Kaya natin to, sabi niya. Siguro, Pero, at it least affects, mas, It affects the family, really. Mas mabilis mag-bottom yung alcoholic at saka ako, no? Mas mabobottom yung family. Yeah, mas mabobottom ang family. Natingin mo, ikaw ba nabawasan yung pag-iwasin mo nung tumakas yung presyo ng sigarilo? Hindi naman, eh. Hindi naman. Buti naman ako, hindi naman sa sigarilo. Buti naman sa inyo. Okay. So, you heard it, ladies and gentlemen, no? Uh, there are several areas ng buhay na sinabi nila na uh, you should watch out and that could be a measure of whether uh, alcoholic or addict na yung mga kasama niyo sa bahay. But of course, hindi naman ibig sabihin na kapag nakita niyo na hindi na nagpapapasok sa school yung mga anak niyo, eh, addict na sila. But you have to be aware of this and let's not have yung mga denials no? para at the earliest possible time ay eh, ma-arrest kung meron mang addiction. And so, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have a sh another break and then when we come back, we're going to discuss ano yung pwede nilang gawin na maitulong sa mga uh, kapamilya natin who's into drug or alcohol addiction. I would like to read this question, a text message. Ang daming nagte-text. I wish I can read all of them, ano? but I think short tie sa time. Ito, from Sheila F. Sabi niya, can drug addiction be treated for life? Since, as you said, it is a disease. Again, it's yeah. not curable, uh, but it's manageable. It could uh -huh. be managed for life. Ako bilang bilang a recovering addict, I'm I'm ready. My mind is set that this is for life. You mm -hmm. know, and if you ask when is recovery possible, that would be on my deathbed. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. I think uh, it cannot be cured. It can only, it can only be arrested. And the length of uh, recovery time is until your death. 
Mm, okay. Uh, well, for me, I think technology right now uh, says that it cannot be cured. Technology, but it can no? be managed, no? Just like yung hypertension and uh, diabetes. Mm. It's you, Once you have it, you have it for life. And you mm. only need to take your medications to manage it. At this time, you know, and let's hope and pray that, uh, you know, five years from now, ten years from now, they'll be able to find probably a vaccine or a cure. <laughs> or, you know. yeah. I don't know, I don't know. But this, one, this is one thing I can promise you. If you die and you're in recovery, you will go to heaven. Uh, <laughs> okay. Okay, so much for that. Now, uh, I'm sure our televiewers are uh, very uh, parang interested to know if they want to support your family members or kung may addict talagang nanonood sa atin, how can your, I, I know you have a group, no? So what are the, how can your group help these people and what are your activities, what are the programs na ginagawa ninyo, ng group ninyo? Uh, and what's your group in the first place? Uh, okay, but uh, our group got disqualified no, from the party list. <laughs> 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 so, uh, hindi, yung sa akin lang, kung ikaw ay tumitira ng drugs, you know, kung kapatid kita, pareho tayong may sakit. You know, pare, umamin ka na lang and humingi ka ng tulong. Nandiyan yung tulong. Pwede mo kaming tawagan or i-text, you know. And tutulong kami sa inyo. And para sa mga kapamilya naman, siguro, same thing, no? Ask for help. Mahirap gamutin yung addict sa loob ng pamilya, you know. So, mm-hmm. Sa nais yung baguhin yung addict nyo, hindi siya magbabago, kayo yung magbabago. Mm-hmm. Kayo yung makahatak pa baba. You know? mm-hmm. And yung sa mga activities naman namin, we have the, like in Silungan, Monday to Friday, we have the meetings there, yung self-help groups, uh, from 6 o'clock, you know, six, Silungan dito sa upper session road, yung CSWD. CSWD. One hour lang yan, 6 to 7 o'clock in the evening. That's Monday to Friday, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think yung first step lang is just, huwag kayong mahiya, harapin yung takot. No uh, hindi ko to kayang i-control, hindi ko kayang paggalingin ang sarili ko. Kailangan kong humingi ng tulong sa aking Diyos. You know? At siguro sa kapamilya, lots of prayers. You know? A lot of prayers. Kung misa nga kasi Junjun, yung meron yung mga pamilya na parang sinasabi nila, No, he's okay. Kita mo, pagka ano lang, just show some love and ano, tas okay na yan. Pero ang, ang totoo, kailangan ng professional help. You know, that huh? love you say, yung siguro uh-huh. the love that you give would probably the love that will kill. No? So, sa recovery, we learn how to ki- give the right kind of love. Because the kind of love that enables the addiction is, the, is, a, death, is a deadly kind of love. You know? Pinapatay mm-hmm. nyo siya. You know? Dahil sa hiya nyo or shame or guilt. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's why, as I mentioned earlier, there's what we call tough love. You know, wag mong papasukin ng bahay. Kawawa naman yung anak ko, pero kaysa naman konsentihin niyo yung behavior niya, uwi lang siya ng uwi. Tulad nung nangyari kay Robert, yung example niya kanina, mm-hmm pinaalam niya sa tatay niya, Dad, <laughs> hindi ko kaya. <laughs> you know, kayo na mag-support. So that left Robert free and clear to use drugs you know, mm. for 30 years. You know? Kinadal siya ng father oh, niya. No? That's what we call enabling. Binayaran yung utang, uh-huh. nagsinungaling, you know, yung mga ganun. You know? yeah. Tinubos sa jail. Yeah. Uh, Recently, we also registered a, a, a group here in Baguio, yung Addicts and Alcoholics Carrying the Message Association. NGO tayo, no? It, it, and one of our platforms... Had we been qualified to mm-hmm. run as party list, one of our platforms, of course, was to make recovery affordable and available to all. Mm-hmm. Uh, kung sana pwedeng ma- ma-acknowledge yan ng mga uh, in HMOs, yung mga health providers, so that instead of their employees being kicked out because of uh, or terminated, meron silang allowance na, because it's a health concern. Mm-hmm. You know, so those were one of the things that we were hoping to do. Meanwhile, Silungan, 6 p.m. <laughs> and uh, siguro right now, we're also focused on the, because I'm also a trainer of Colombo Plan. Uh, we're an international organization. We're funded by the U.S. State Department to raise the standards of treatment in Asia. So right now, we're focused on educating and certifying counselors in the country. So they, if you, although dito, hindi ka pwede mag-practice ng counseling if you're not licensed, but if you're a certified addiction counselor, you can find a job anywhere in Asia, you know, some of the graduates of this program already have jobs in, you know, good jobs, you know, in other countries, no? So that's what we're also focused on, raising the quali- standards of treatment so we can have better recovery and better outcomes, no? Robert? Yeah, well, I, for me, I think the first, <laughs> the first few segments, Cecil, we, you know, we were talking about uh, the problems, and I'm glad that we're talking about the solutions right now. 
And you know, I just really like to first really acknowledge my my God, you know, Jesus Christ, for really uh, for you know helping me with this. This this is uh, this is has affected my life and the life of my loved ones for so much. And I don't think I can make it without my my God. And also the support of my my family, my wife, my children, you know, and my fellow recovering addicts, really for you know the. You know, there's this place that I was able to go to. You know, uh, here I go here. You know, there was a time that my prayers were na, uh, God, please get me into a position that I will be able to, you know, instead of getting, getting and getting, that I'll be able to be, you know, be able naman to give naman a little. You know, and I'm glad that I, I think I'm in, I'm slowly getting to that point and, and I've been volunteering my time to uh, this treatment facility here in it's at Gopi Horizon it's Serenity at the Steps and you know this has more more often than that has given me my life eh. so right now I really like to you know there's people who would like to get to this place pero uh, we have constraints financially or or not you know and you know I'm really really appealing you know if if you're if you're in an opportunity to be able to give, you know I I hope you can give. You know, when I pray, there were two major prayers and one of that was pr- it's being answered right now. Na I can you know instead of getting and getting, makabigay naman ako ngayon ng konte. So I'm giving my time since sa Serenity at Aquari at Coffee Horizon. I've been going to. I'm happy for this invitation. You know, na to be here to talk about this one, to get out in the open. You know, I was telling myself. Kung magsasabi ako na adik ako, baka wala na akong makuha ang trabaho dito sa Baguio, no? But, or, you know, I'd probably be run out of Baguio, baka paalisin ako sa Baguio. But, you know, the, the, the consequence of this one is walang matutulungan, you know? So, I'm happy for the invitation of Larry. You guys, and of course, really, my, my recovering friends, I wouldn't be able to do this alone, eh. At saka without my, my God. So, yun ang, yun ang solution ko, really. You know, we've gone all beyond human human help on this one, I believe really in the higher, in higher power. Okay, so, ang bilis ng oras, ano? So, but uh, before we uh, we end, I, I'd like to ask you na any last message to the family of the addicts and to the addicts themselves. Uh, uh, I have a message, you know? Uh, sabihin ko lang, welcome kayo sa fellowship namin, huwag kayong ang mag-alala, huwag kayong matakot, Meron kaming confidentiality code. Hindi namin kayo bubulgar. Hindi namin kayo papakulong. We have confidentiality code na. <laughs> not so, under surveillance. Ba yun? May, ba yun? Kayo, you're not under surveillance. At ikikip namin yung anonymity ninyo. At may, may bayad always, ba to? May bayad? Walang bayad. Ayun. It's free of charge. We are happy and we are glad that you will be with us because we will help you and you are helping us. Pare-parehas tayong may sakit. Mm-hmm. Pare-parehas tayo magtulungan. Okay. Only addicts and alcoholics can help another addict and an alcoholic. Okay. So, yun, Thank you very no much. Cure. Thank you very much, Larry. Okay. Yes, Ryan. I want to say there's two, there are two factors that contribute to being to the making of an addict, genetic and environmental, or a combination of both. Down the family line, na, na re, uh, in treatment, don't ko na-realize, somewhere down the line, I had an alcoholic uncle, you know, and maybe somewhere down his line, meron din uh, chronic uh, smoke or whatever. Mm-hmm. No? Pero may, may genetic code yan eh. That's A, passed on. So for the families, look out for that. Uh, again, it's not, a, it's not a moral issue. No? It's a health concern. Secondly, also, yung confrontation, yung confrontation sa suspected addict sa family, that's not gonna help that's not going to help him come out in the open and, and seek help and maybe even admit to having a problem with drugs or, or alcohol or whatever it is. When you're able to do that in a loving manner, lalabas at lalabas din naman eh. And thank you for mentioning, Robert, not to sound preachy. It's, it's a spiritual affair. Mm-hmm. Oftentimes, you know, you void, the void in the spirit, they call it the hole in the soul. When there's that and somebody spiritual uh, uh, yeah. one seeking to fill it 
will resort to drugs or alcohol, pero walang, walang kanya. Uh, it can only give so much. So, deal with the addict in, on that level, on mm-hmm. a spiritual level, not, not moral or behavioral. Okay, thank you very much for that message. And we go to Robert. Well, Any last my, word? My last words actually really is, you know, I can, I really understand and I can really relate to the family you know, who's really suffering uh, with this disease, you know, be it the addict himself or the family. I know it's really very painful. You know, every time we start our fellowship or our meetings, we always try to reflect on the still suffering addicts out there. You know, and I do this really. I really do do this because I know, I know the feeling. Eh? And, you know, all I can say is that, you know, I am a living proof that uh, there is a solution. People beside me, Renato, Junjun, who just celebrated his 19 years of staying clean and sober, when 19 hours before probably wouldn't be possible. Si Larry, who's been, you know, in recovery. Uh, my family themselves, you know, my children and my wife is pro- living proof that there is really a solution to this one. Uh, we are a walking miracle, you know, and... Uh, flesh and bone right here right now you know uh, there is this is there's a solution there's a problem but there's there is a solution so oh, that's it thank you okay so and, Junju uh, so there are many pathways to recovery you know and uh, it's difficult to discern especially when you know you're plagued with all this uh, gulo in the family and uh, you know you, you just have to ask and pray to God to guide to guide you, you know, and you will find the path. Like in Serenity, we don't advertise, you know. That we used to advertise, but now I stopped advertising. If God means you, means for you to get to the recovery, you will find it. You will find us. You will find it. So pray yourself. It sounds corny, you know, but it really does, you know. And you uh, know, ask for help from above and from your friends or professionals. You know, and like Robert said, every moment I stop smoking. Also, I don't have any. I think maybe the only drug I take now is just caffeine. But I used to eat and smoke at the same time, you know, tapos <laughs> and everything, you know. And today I'm really clean, you know. And it's a miracle na hindi ako ginigiyang. It's a miracle na hindi ako naghahanap ng sigarilyo ngayon, you know. You know and and I, st- I was able to stop smoking. I did not ask God to help me stop smoking. I asked Him to give me the desire to stop smoking. And He gave me the desire by getting me sick. You know? <laughs> so, you know, every time I would take a puff of cigarette, la- I'm paet kasi nagka hepatitis ako. You know? So that was his way of helping. So help will not come in a, in a package that you, in a, maybe in a, not in an attractive package, but it will not probably come in something you don't like. You know? And that's the real kind of help. But you just have to, don't quit before the miracle happens. Ilang ko. Stay okay. true. Okay. So, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have here four miracles. Yeah. Proof of miracles, di ba? Ikaw, oh, oh, ah, lima, lima tayo. And uh, ang masasabi ko lang, no, I, 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 really, I really believe, I can relate, no, talagang miracle talaga. And I can understand the families of the addicts who are thinking na hopeless yung case. I used to think that way, but it's not. It's not. You, you have to believe me on that because uh, I believe in miracles. So, with that, I'd like to thank our guests, Jun Jun, no, Jun Jun, and the siya yung pwedeng maging ano counselor natin, no, and uh, in your family members, and of course, Larry for sharing us your experiences also. Hello, honey. And bossing <laughs> eh. okay. And Robert, no, Robert. Uh, we are very much inspired by what you shared with us tonight. And also Renato, thank you for sharing your wisdom with us. And uh, also, I'd like to thank, of course, you, the televiewers who are very, very participative no and uh, there are so many text messages i hope we have enough time to do that pero uh, wala po but next time maybe we're going to have a another uh, around episode and we're going to invite them back if they don't mind no if they don't mind okay so uh, i'd like to thank everybody and also uh, we have a website it's called says at closer to home.com and I'd like to thank my good friend Slash Robeves, who is the one who created this website for us. So if you'd like to see yung mga episodes po dito, ay papalabas namin and we're going to upload this also on YouTube. 
you want to have a review ng mga ganito. YouTube. Okay, so with that, I'd like to say that uh, please be reminded that love and peace will reign if we're closer to home. This is your Atises Apostol saying, have a peaceful night, everyone. God Good evening. God bless.